Hi there, this is Tim with a video of No Man's Sky on PC. And basically in this video, I'm just gonna be showing the graphics and controls menus and the limitations that No Man's Sky has released with. As you can see, I bought it on uh, GOG.com. I think they kind of support the developer a little bit more than Steam usually. And uh, obviously booting into the game for the first time. Now I know there's been a lot of kind of negativity about the game. Um, this, it, I'm not that negative about it. I had kind of limited expectations anyway. Um, but this isn't a review. This isn't a positive or a negative. Um, but there is a lot of negative in what I'm about to say. Basically, when you first go into the game, you have to initialize your systems. Obviously, you hold down the E key, which is what it's guiding you to do right here. And if you take a note, that is a circle there. Uh, that'll be important later. So uh, what you end up with is you start on a um, randomized planet. You see details on the planet at the bottom left. Uh, make a note of the UI there, how it looks and everything. Um, and the fact that the reticule in the middle of the screen is obviously circular. So the UI looks pretty good on this um, 16 by 9 resolution, uh, 1920 by 1080. And it's just basically setting you up for the fact that you have crashed on a planet, you have to repair your ship in order to actually take off and begin the game. So as far as playing the game is concerned, uh, PC, PS4, probably very, very, very similar. Differences obviously is that with PC you can play with mouse and keyboard. Uh, with PS4 you have the PS4 controller. And what is different on PC is that you have this uh, control setting um, where you can obviously set up keyboard mouse as you can see on the left and uh, gamepad on the right. Now I was thinking this looks fairly simple. I'll be able to click on something on this gamepad column and I'll be I'll be able to uh, um, kind of pull back on my throttle stick that I have. I have a um, Thrustmaster Warthog throttle, but it does not do that. You cannot bind a, uh, a joystick or a throttle that you use in other space games or other flight games into No Man's Sky. Uh, the only way that I can think of that you could do it is to use a third-party tool like Joy to Key, which um, emulates um, uh, key presses whenever you move a joystick um, or press a joystick button. So basically you would press your joystick button for fire and it would um, press the key for fire. So uh, that's really your only option. Um, I assume that with gamepads, maybe it'll, maybe it supports the Xbox 360, the Xbox One, or uh, the PS4 controller plugged into a PC, but I have no way of verifying that, and mainly my disappointment is about the fact that they don't support a joystick on PC. Um, this is an, another options menu. Um, you can load a save game, um, things like that. I actually think this menu is on PS4 as well. Um, one of the things that it took me a few moments to figure out is that when you press on something in, in this menu, you actually have to hold down on the key um, for it to go all the way around the circle, which is what you can see me doing here. You can see it goes all the way around as it changes these settings. And I've cycled through the um, anti-aliasing uh, settings there for you. This is the field of view. You have on foot and flight and both go from 60 to 100 uh, field of view. And then up here you have the AF setting, which goes from 1 to 16. That's fairly normal. Uh, texture detail you have low to high. Shadow detail you have low to ultra. Uh, generation detail beneath that low to high. Reflection quality low to high. And um, the thing I need to point out with this is that it does not stop the pop-in that you see on the PS4. So you're still going to get the, the mountains just kind of appearing in front of you um, at a particular distance. There's no slider for uh, draw distance at all, um, which is disappointing. And then any, any time you change any setting in the graphics menu, you have to quit to the, de to, to the uh, desktop 
every single time and reload the game. Um, so I thought I would use this opportunity to test triple screens and their implementation because Sean Murray um, from from Hello Games, which is the uh, developer, posted a picture of No Man's Sky running on triple screens. And uh, yes, it does run on triple screens, um, but the UI does not, um, which is what you'll see. Now, um, surround uh, vision here, it basically tells Windows that you have one screen that is three wide. Um, so basically it kind of fools any game into thinking that that is the size of your monitor. So you have to set up monitor primary and then you can set up your resolution which for me is uh, three um, 1080p monitors and then obviously I have to restart for the settings to take effect. And then back into the game and I was quite enthusiastic at this point until I saw this. Remember how that was a circle earlier? Well now it's not. Now it's an oval because although the mountains, the plants and the animals look perfect across three screens, the UI does not and is in fact stretched. So what should have just been displayed on the center screen is now stretched across the three as you can see there. And so is the menu. And this is really unfortunate because basically it means that yes, you've implemented triple screens, but no, you have not implemented triple screens in a way that I want to use them. Um, so um, I'm going to be playing this game. I'm probably going to enjoy this game, unfortunately, for a lot of you that don't like it. Um, but I'm definitely not playing it in triple screens. It's just not implemented in a way that I feel like I can right now. Um, anyway, I hope that showed you what's there in the PC version that isn't there in the PS4 version and it helps you to know which version to buy if you are going to buy this game. Thanks, bye.